Money, it matters a lot, especially when you only have a little. Food, water, shelter, clothing, a phone, a ride, medicine, face masks, these things aren't free, but you need all of them to get a job. And you need a job so you can make money. Money to buy more food, water, shelter, clothing. Okay, you get it. The price of living adds up. And if you've lost your job or have no skills in high demand, it's harder for you to make money. And that affects how and where you're able to live. That's the problem with money. Some people need more than they can make. And even though 119 million people worked full time last year, more than 20 million of them made less than $600 a week. So I wanna spend just five minutes on two of your favorite topics, minimum wage and politics. Because if you work for a year and bring home less than $30,000, this election could change that. It is a very low number. You know, with what's happened to the economy, with what's happened to the cost, I mean, it's just, I don't know how you live on $7.25 an hour. But I would say, let the states decide. Blinders have taken off the American people. I think they're ready. They're ready to insist that the minimum wage be $15 an hour. In spite of their differences, these two do agree on one point. $7.25 an hour is weak and hardly enough to live on. Biden says he'd raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour, and President Trump wants states to handle the issue on their own. So what could happen to minimum wage after the election? These are the states where the lowest paid workers make the federal minimum wage. They're home to around 40% of our population. Minimum wage workers here make $7.25 an hour, bringing home about $12,000 after federal taxes. They're living on around $33 a day. Under President Trump, state governments would decide if they want to raise their minimum wage. The idea is if they don't, they risk losing workers to better paying jobs in other states, like these, all currently paying more than the federal minimum. The theory is that competitive wages entice workers to relocate, which grows the tax base of the states they move to. Under Joe Biden's plan, along with some changes in the Senate, minimum wage goes up to $15 an hour. That's about $31,000 a year. The idea is doubling the minimum wage could lift every full-time working person out of poverty, more than 20 million workers. That means some of your paychecks could double. A person making $1,200 a month in Oklahoma could see their income jump to $2,400. Both plans aim to redistribute wealth. The big difference is the size of the redistribution. Under Trump's plan, only some states would raise the wage. Biden's plan would raise the wage in every state. Think about it this way. The average cost for a one-bedroom apartment is around $1,600 a month. A minimum wage worker needs to put in 221 hours to pay for it. That's 28 shifts in a month. At $15 an hour, that worker would need to work 107 hours. That's half the number of shifts. Who wouldn't want to make more money? This sounds great if you're working a low-wage job, but this is politics, so of course, everything has a cost. One argument against Biden's plan, more than doubling the minimum wage will hurt low-wage workers in the long run because some businesses will have to close, cut back hours, or raise prices to stay profitable and higher prices could drive customers away, helping large retailers and hurting local economies. Another concern is managers will stop hiring unskilled workers, preferring candidates with more skills and experience to justify the higher rate of pay. And if they can't afford labor from humans, they might have to turn to robots. Side note, a popular theme at this year's Consumer Electronics Show was service robots. So personal assistants, food servers, and chefs, heads up. On the other side, Trump's opponents argue the raise is needed now, and doing nothing could have a crippling effect on business if people can't afford to make purchases. Opponents also argue pandemic-related job losses have forced millions of American families into poverty, and that states aren't adequately keeping wages competitive. So leaving minimum wage to the states is not working. There's a lot to consider. Some politicians point to Seattle for proof that a raise will or will not work. The city's been raising its minimum wage for years and will reach $15 an hour next year. But economists don't agree on the results. Since the raises began, some employers had trouble covering shifts as some workers decided to work fewer hours. And businesses that couldn't adapt to the new cost of labor had to close or move. But experienced workers making the minimum did bring home more money. Results are mixed. So how could these plans affect you? 
Would you get a pay raise? Maybe afford an apartment on your own? Maybe you'd lose your job to a self-driving shelf with a cat face? Or maybe you'd move across the country for better opportunities? The fact is, both candidates agree $725 is not enough money. How we fix it is up to you.